G'day guys, we're at the Wai Tai headquarters today. We want to do a video of the Wai Tai anti-theft install. Um, we get a lot of requests from our customers to show them how do we do the install because it's essentially designed as a DIY installation. So today we'll do, be doing the install on the caravan behind us um, and we'll take you through the process of making the decisions on the install and the tools that you need. So to jump right into it, Let's talk about what we need. So the first thing, you will receive the loom for the white anti-theft inside your anti-theft box. The loom basically has all the tags named for the wiring that needs to go in. So we suggest that you make up your seven core cable with the loom soldered on um, at, before you start the job because it's easier to solder outside of the caravan than trying to solder inside the caravan when you're making it up. So measure your seven core cable to the length of the installation, which we'll show you later how to make that decision. Um, and then solder these wires up. We also recommend that you use a heavy duty seven core cable um, because you are sending your brake signals and you're earthing your uh, wire anti-theft through this cable. So it needs to be a fairly um, high gauge for you to uh, be able to send those signals through. And we pull about 30 amps maximum on this unit so we want to make sure that we have good quality cable that we use in the install the next thing you will need is probably your um, terminals so these are available at your super cheaps or repcos or even bunning sell them um, these are used to tee your seven core cable into the seven core cable and the lighting so the lighting signals the brake signals the earth into the caravan you will also need um, a cable for the power so just a six millimeter power cable, twin core power cable. That is to power up the anti-theft from the battery system. Um, so again, this here, you will have to determine the length based on where you place the anti-theft into the caravan. On the end of the power cable, you're gonna need your terminals that goes onto the battery. So you need to, depending on the size of the terminals on your battery, that could be eight or 10 millimeter terminals that will be shrunk onto the power cable that connects to the battery. Next we will need some um, brackets to hold the cable in place as you feed it down the chassis of the caravan and into the crevices leading to the batteries and also making sure the cable doesn't move around when you're traveling. So securing that cable is important. So we are using 25 mole brackets and we are also using 15 mole brackets. So the 25 mole is where the seven core and the power cable will come together. Um, the 15 mole is where the power cord cable carries on towards the battery in the caravan. You will need electrical tape like in all electrical work. Make sure you've got good quality electrical tape. We are going to use silicon to just silicon the holes because in this caravan we are going to actually drill holes through the uh, floor to get the cable down into the chassis and then route it back up to the battery and to the seven core cable so we want to make sure that we seal that up properly when we're done so that we don't have any water ingress and water damage in the caravan in the future everything electrical needs some cable ties make sure you've got enough of those and then tools wise we're probably going to need a drill and we have a, a screwdriver impact drill as well to drill the screws in and the screws we're going to use is an 8g 15 millimeter screw this will be used to screw our brackets into the frame to make sure the cable is secure that's basically all the tools and then obviously making sure we've got enough sheathing to make sure we cover our cables so that when the when we are moving over corrugated roads we are not shaving through those cables and creating electrical problems We've got two sizes, we're using the 16 mil for the seven core and the power cable to go together. And we are using 13 mil when the power cable goes off on its own towards the battery. And then lastly, we will be using a small uh, two core cable just for the horn installation. So making sure that we can get the power from the anti-theft system to the horn that will be um, fitted to the bottom of the caravan. And that's all the tools we'll need. Uh, the next step we're going to take is to determine where are we going to actually fit this anti-theft. And from there, we can start working out the length of cable we need. So the first thing we can see when we open the box is the loom. So that's the loom that you will join to the seven core cable. 
that's eventually going to join into your caravan. The loom has the tags on each one of the wires to show you where they would go. But the main lighting wires are all color coded to the Australian standard. So that's pretty easy to fit uh, into your caravan. Then we have the actual anti-theft system. Anti-theft system, positioning of this is important. Make sure that it's always positioned um, north to south in your caravan and not east to west because we're monitoring for movement forward and backward. The next part of the system is the two remotes. You'll get two remotes with your anti-theft system. Each one of those remotes have two buttons, an A and a B, um, and they, do di they have different functions. Uh, button A will arm the alarm, button B is a duress alarm or a panic alarm. If you get into trouble, you'll hold that in and it'll set off the panic alarm. Then we have the horn. This is 105 decibel horn. This is fitted underneath your van uh, on, on the uh, undercarriage to make a nice big sound when the alarm goes off. You also find the motion sensor, motion detector, which is also known as a PIR. This is to detect any movement in the van should anyone walk around in the van and the alarm is armed. The motion sensor also has a bracket for fitment. A lot of people use the bracket. Some people choose to put Velcro on the back and then they can move it around in the annex at, on the outside or inside of the van. Next one is the door magnet. This one uh, you can put either on the entrance door or in any one of the um, doors around the caravan, like the front boot to protect anything that you're trying to uh, store in there. Uh, these are handy, you can have multiples of these, you can have multiples of the PIR depending on how many you need. Then we also have the status LED. Status LED is used to let you know that the arm, alarm is armed, so when you're approaching the van you want to be able to see this when it goes on and know that the alarm is armed, otherwise you open the door and the alarm will uh, set off. We also have the anti-theft user manual. Everything you need to know about the installation and how this system works is in the user manual. And then finally, we have the little white eye sticker letting everyone know that you are protected by our white eye brand. And that's it, that's everything that you get in the box. Okay, so now we are looking at where do we want to install the anti theft system. Most installers, like dealers and manufacturers, would pick a place inside the caravan. Um, with the thought of, you know what, you don't want thieves to get to it, um, there is other places where you can put it. One of the challenges with putting it inside is finding a location that's not just good for the anti-theft in terms of monitoring your movement for when the car caravan is being dragged along, but also access to it. So if you would upgrade to our wireless brake controller or our wireless towing interface, that would mean you would have to be able to access your anti-theft system to be able to pair it up. Also, if you're adding door magnets and PIRs, it also means you need access to the anti-theft system to be able to pair those onto the anti-theft. So sticking the anti-theft inside a cupboard, so a lot of installers would stick it inside a cupboard um, that is really hard to get to. And we have clients phoning us saying, I can't get to this thing to pair my new door magnet or PIR. A lot of manufacturers also stick it under the bed, which is not a bad location, because um, it's accessible enough. Uh, many of your older caravans, well, the, a lot of new caravans too, have their battery systems under the bed. With the new laws passed for lithium batteries, you cannot do that anymore. So the batteries are then moved to your lounge or a cupboard closer to the kitchen uh, so it's away from the bed, which means your anti-theft would either be located close to the batteries, which is a very tight spot, very difficult to get to. So for this installation, we've decided we're not putting the anti-theft inside the caravan. We are actually going to put it in the front boot. That way, it's easy accessible, but it's also closest to the vehicle if we use the wireless brake controller and the wireless towing interface. So these are decisions that you're going to have to go through. In this caravan, the battery system is under the lounge seats. We've got a dual lithium battery system here. So that means we're gonna to have to route our cables from the front boot through the, one of the walls to the battery. And that could be tricky, 
but with a few clever moves we can actually pull the cable through. So let's go and have a look at the front boot and see where we're going to install. Okay, so this is the location that we've decided we're going to fit the anti-theft on this caravan. Um, we decided that the front wall of the front boot is the best spot for it. Uh, this is because we want to make sure that there's not too much interference with the wireless because if you have steel and battery and cable and things in the way of the wireless it could impede the signal won't be terrible but it, it could impede so making sure that as far forward as possible uh, we know that we'll get the best wireless signal going forward so what we decided is in the front boot here we are going to run a cable through the floor um, so the loom of the anti-theft will be running down here with the cable through the floor and running along the chassis, the inside of the chassis, all the way to the back wheel. So at the back wheel you will find on this side of the chassis, on the outer side, that there is the connectors from the 7-core cable, but there's also the hole in the floor where the battery cables come through. So that's the best location for us to get the power cable through to the battery at the back in the kitchen so we will show you where we're going to connect those wires but this is where the most of the connections will be happening okay so what we've done so far is we've actually pulled through the seven core cable which is attached to our loom which we did prior uh, we drilled two holes through the front boot floor and we've got the power cable which is this one here running through the floor going on the inside of the chassis and it's actually going through the floor back up into the battery cabinet and then the seven core cable is hanging off here where we're going to do the connection where the lights come together we also pulled through the horn cable because we'll be fitting the horn at the bottom of the chassis um, facing backwards so that the dirt and stuff doesn't get in there when we're traveling through corrugated roads so what we're going to do now is we will be tying everything up, tidying the cabling, and then we'll move on to the connection on the seven core cable. I thought it'd be good to show you just how these terminals work. They actually work great in the installation of the Y-Tie Anti-Theft. So you buy, we've spoken about these terminals before, but what you would do if this is your permanent wire that is on the caravan, you would basically open the terminal, make sure that goes to the back side of the terminal, and then so that is sitting over your current wire and then you would bring your wire to anti-theft wire and you would just slide it through into the second slot once you've got that set up correctly that's when you start crimping the terminal together and that's as easy as just making sure that you press the little tag in right through so it seats properly because that actually cuts through the cable and makes the bridge that you need for the anti-theft once you've done that you can click it closed and that's a really secure connection for the anti-theft unit and it's really clean and easy to tie together. Okay, I thought I'll show you where we're going to do the wire tie connection today. So we follow the seven core cable running down the channel from the front door bar, draw bar and coming out here and all the connections are made in this one spot. You will notice that there's a connector with the same colouring as what you found on your seven core cable. That's your lighting circuits. So all we're going to do is we're going to tie in the wire tie to where these cable colors match up. The wire tie obviously have the tags, but by the time you get here, you won't have the tags, but the colors do match. You'll also find that the, seven, uh, uh, the service brake wire actually sits further down, and that's where you'll be wiring your service brake wire in, and that's normally the blue cable. So all we're going to do now is we're going to use our terminals and connect our 7 core from the wire anti-theft into the 7 core of the caravan. Okay, so we've now shortened the cable for the horn uh, and we shrunk the two spade lugs onto it. These two spade lugs will just go onto these two terminals on the horn. They are not polarity sensitive, so positive and negative can go either way. So all you would do now is just slide that on. You'll also notice that we're facing the horn backwards. So that means the chances of dirt and things shooting up and filling in this space where the cone is, is less. It's always good to check the horn and make sure that it's clean and you can wash them out with uh, hose water and then they will keep on going. So next we want to fit the status LED. 
The status LED is used to show you that the alarm is actually on. So you want to fit this somewhere where it's visible from the outside of the van. We have found a lot of manufacturers and dealers sometimes put it on the inside of the van, but that defeats the object of the status LED. So this is so that when you approach the van, you can see that the alarm is on and you can then make sure that you disarm it and it doesn't trigger when you actually enter into the caravan. For today's fit, we're going to fit this in the front boot door because that is uh, probably easiest fit for us, which is closest to the anti-theft unit. But it also serves a purpose that if we approach the van, we can see that status LED very clearly. We will fit it there and then what will happen is when we open the door, uh, the cable that comes from the anti-theft will actually just swing around the door. So that's a pretty good fit for us. Uh, you can fit it anywhere on one of your panels. Those panels are fairly thick, so that means you won't be able to get the nut on at the back. However, if you put some silicon around it and stick it through the panel, that will seal properly and it will have a good weather seal and there won't be water ingress from that. Okay, so with your anti-theft system, you receive a PIR infrared motion sensor as well as a door magnet. These are both wireless uh, products, so you don't need to wire them in. We'll talk a bit later about where we would position the PIR, but I do want to talk about the door magnet first. So the door magnet, we have a lot of our customers asking us, where do we fit this thing? Because the door frames are different on all the different types of caravans. So the first thing to note is that this side of the door magnet, which is the bigger one with the LED, needs to be on the stationary side of the caravan. So not onto the door that's moving. It needs to be on the stationary side because that's the side that will be transmitting to your white anti-theft. Also on this door, you will notice that there's a ridge here. So it means that if I'm gonna put this door magnet over here, it's gonna be slightly hiding behind this ridge. That's not a problem because if you look at what I can do here if you keep an eye on the blue LED if that is where my door is going to close at if I move that fast you will notice the blue LED come on that means that will trigger the alarm so as long as that little blue LED is lighting up then you will be triggering the alarm when the door opens so we'll go ahead and fit this now and show you how that works Fitting the motion sensor, basically what you want to do is you want to point it to your entry, your door entry. So in the back corner of this caravan is really a good spot. Uh, this is a pop top, so when the roof drops, that's going to be the height there that we're working with. If you have a full caravan, you could probably stick it up in the corner there. Now the PIR actually has an on-off button. So if you would want to camp in a free campsite and you're not comfortable with your surroundings, and you want the alarm on while you're in the caravan, you can just flick the switch off, and that means that the alarm for the motion, uh, someone pulling the caravan is still intact, as well as your door magnet, and you can then sleep safely inside of the caravan. So for this um, fitment, we're gonna actually put the bracket onto the cupboard here, and then put the PI yeah, onto that. Another option that we've seen our customers use is that they put um, Velcro tape on the back of this, then they can actually move the PIR around. So if you've got an annex on the outside, you just rip it off the cupboard here and you stick it outside in the annex and that protects the annex if someone walks into it. Let's go ahead and fit that. So we are just about ready to wire in the um, anti-theft to the battery. We want to make sure we go directly to the battery because that's your most um, reliable feed to the anti-theft. And that means we can then get the 25 maximum amps that we need to the brakes when we need it. Sometimes battery management systems don't allow us to do that. We also want to make sure that you put a second fuse. You'll notice there is a fuse on the loom, on the power line. 
Uh, we do put a second fuse in because that's closest to the battery and if there's any shorts on the line, this fuse will blow first um, because if the short is further down the side of the caravan, the fuse on the anti-theft might not blow straight away. We also want to make sure the anti-theft is not plugged in right now because we will be connecting battery and there might be a power surge. We don't want to um, impact the electronics of the anti-theft at this stage. So we'll go ahead and wire this up. Okay, we are now ready to fit the anti-theft to the front boot. So where we want to position it, we'll find it and then make sure that you've got long enough screws that protrude through the ears of the holes and deep enough to actually make sure it's fitted properly onto the front boot. We will let, so we'll fit this right now and then we'll talk about how do we add the GPS to the loom because the connector's are already there. It's important to note that the anti-theft should be facing north-south. If north is your drawbar and south is your taillights, it should be in that direction because we are monitoring for movement forward and backward. Uh, it cannot be fitted to the side wall, which would be east-west. So make sure that you fit it north-south or south-north. Either way is fine. The last bit to the install is adding the GPS system. If you have bought that, this is an extra optional uh, buy. But if you have the GPS unit, you will notice that we have made provision for the connectors for the GPS in our loom. So the GPS has connectors. It's actually got three connectors. You'll only need the two that actually fits into the loom. So all you will do is you will make sure that you clip those connectors together like that. And then the GPS is now connected and ready to be used. You will also notice that the GPS has got the IMEI number on the front. You will need that for your GPS activation. So make sure you take a photo of that or write it down somewhere. Once that's in place, you can just go ahead and fit the GPS to the side of the anti-theft anywhere near there is fine. And now you will be covered for theft and for tracking. That concludes the installation of the anti-theft. Generally, this installation, if you're doing it the first time, will take you roughly about three hours. The more you do of them, if you're an installer, probably you're gonna get it down to an hour and a half if you do proper prep work. So this system is now live and working. By arming it, I will press button A. You will notice one flash, a pause, two flashes, and you'll also notice the status LED has now lit up. That shows me we're armed. Uh, if someone tries to pull this van now or enter, then the alarm will go off. We'll show you a bit of that just now.